the little book of behavioral investing a bite-sized summary presented by Edelweiss Mutual Fund are you your worst enemy when it comes to investing are your biases getting in the way of you achieving your financial goals James Montier answered these questions in the little book of behavioral investing by foraying into the field of behavioral finance. James Montier is a member of GMO's asset allocation team and the author of three widely popular books on investing. Elucidating the psychological element of sound investment, this book helps its readers recognize and overcome behavioral barriers like emotion and overconfidence that affect investment decision making. For instance, spotting rainbows instead of clouds can lead investors to lose money or achieve lower returns. What does Montia mean by this? There is no winter coming. As humans, we all are inherently optimistic. Most of us hold an extremely high belief in ourselves, which swells due to our illusion of control. While such an attitude is apt for self-help, it is highly unproductive for investing. Let's delve deeper into the psychology of things. Are you with me? It's quiz time. A ball and a bat to get the cost $1.1 in total. If the bat costs a dollar more than the ball, how much does the ball cost? If you answer $0.1, you are wrong. The correct answer is $0.05. The fact that a lot of us would have jumped to the wrong answer, that is $0.1, has got to do with how our brain thinks and makes us jump to conclusions. According to some psychologists, our brain processes information in two ways, using two systems, the X system and the C system. The X system is more emotionally oriented and impulsive. It is the brain's default mode of operation that comes into play automatically and effortlessly for generally quick responses. Everyone who has answered the bat and the ball question incorrectly was using the brain's X system. However, those that answered correctly had taken a step back to answer the question mathematically. Such a deliberate effort of holding back the brain's default mode of operation, the X system, for a more logical approach, is characteristic of the C system of thinking. The C system is the logical system of the brain and is slower than the X system. So how is this related to spotting clouds instead of rainbows? Simply put, a high sense of self-esteem and optimism falls under the X system of thinking, which dates back to our ancestors. For them, life was tougher in terms of risk. Optimism was a survival strategy for them which doesn't quite work for the modern-day investor. In fact, over-optimism is a bane for investors. Being skeptical and questioning optimistic scenarios is possibly the best investment strategy. Indeed, the best investors ask themselves, why should I own this stock rather than why shouldn't I own this stock? Montia goes on to explain why we should condition ourselves to make financial decision using the C system of thinking that is logical and not emotional. Consider this. After a heavy meal, you promise yourself to never overeat again. However, your resolve is broken the next time you are hungry. Our inability to predict our future behavior under emotional stress is referred to as empathy gap. When it comes to investing, empathy gaps can lead to massive losses. To avoid making mistakes due to empathy gap, Montia advises the strategy of pre-commitment to plan your investment when you're not agitated 
and the markets are stable. Another offshoot of optimism that we should be wary of while investing, Montia advises, is overconfidence. Psychology studies have proven that experts tend to be more overconfident and humans tend to confuse confidence with skill. For example, studies have shown that doctors predict that they would be right around 90% of time, while in reality they were right just 15% of the times. Such a disparity exists because we prefer doctors who are confident. Would we go to a doctor who is unsure about his diagnosis? So what about fund managers who say things like, I predict a five-fold return on your money. Indeed, the illusion of being an expert drives their overconfidence, which others confuse with skill, thus believing in experts. Predicting the future in the world of investment, according to Montia, is sheer madness. In a study of forecasting conducted by Philip Tetlock, it was found that experts are only marginally better at forecasting than someone who can make predictions based on a coin toss. It would be false to assume that more information would lead to a sounder investment decision. Studies have shown that decisions are taken faster and more accurately when a lesser amount of information is available. Having more information just increases the confidence of the decision maker and the confidence, as we saw earlier, can often be mistaken for skills. Valuation of a stock, its balance sheet and the discipline of the board managing the cash on behalf of the stock are good enough for most investment decisions. Similarly, looking for information that supports our preconceived notions selectively is another enemy of rational decision making. This is called confirmation bias. Excellent investors avoid confirmation bias by looking for information that proves their analysis wrong. Furthermore, analysis and investment decisions need to be revisited regularly. A trap that the not-so-successful investors fall into is the sunk cost fallacy, which makes them stick to an earlier position or decision simply because a lot of time and money had been invested into that decision. Now let's talk about bubbles. Not the frothy colorful kind, but the ones that can take the shot off your backs. A bubble, in its strictest sense, is defined as price movement that is at least two standard deviations away from the trend. Bubbles are actually predictable surprises that explode into crisis because the few people who were aware of the problems that led to bubble did not act on it. For every bubble, there is always a set of people who caution against the bubble. However, the challenge is not in predicting the bubble, but in predicting the timing of when the bubble will burst and become a crisis. Hence the term predictable surprise. People predict a bubble but are surprised by the timing of the bubble burst. There are five reasons that we are unable to tackle such predictable surprises on time. First, over-optimism. Believing that others will get caught in a bubble burst, I will not. Second, the illusion of control that we carry within ourselves. Third, the self-serving and self-confirmation bias that makes us believe only in information that meets our interest. Fourth, we end up spending more time and effort to make choices that are short-term oriented. Fifth, finally, we miss spotting the bubble because we are not looking for it. We are so enthralled by the bubble that we are not looking at the evidence of it bursting anytime soon. Behavioral economics terms this as inattentional blindness. Don't move. In the 1950s and 1960s, the average holding period of stocks by investors was about 7 to 8 years. However, today the average stock holding period on the New York Stock Exchange is just six months. Being myopic and thinking only for the short term is a malady in the investing world today. In reality, 
the best thing to be done is to leave the portfolio alone. We see action bias as a positive thing. What should the investor do instead? The opposite of action bias is not inaction, but patience. Patience and discipline are the best friends of an investor. By holding on to your stocks, you would often realize that you are going against the crowd or the herd, which can make you anxious. Being contrarian requires you to activate your brain's C system, which requires deliberate effort. However, a degree of caution is also required. As an optimist, holding a high regard of self-esteem, most of us tend to think of ourselves as contrarian when we are not. This comes from the lack of introspection of our actions. The following deliberate behaviors are required to be a contrarian investor. Demonstrate the courage to go against conventional wisdom and groupthink. Practice critical and independent thinking before making choices, including your investment decisions. Be disciplined enough to stick to the path of being a contrarian. Grit matters. So when do I sell? The best way to decide when to sell is to stop focusing on the short term. Focus on the process, not the result. Too much focus on the results leads to suboptimal choices on account of desire to reduce losses and avoid ambiguity. Instead, focusing on the process leads to better decisions and higher long-term returns. The only person standing between you and a successful investment decisions is you and your errors and biases. Get your C-System to think consciously and avoid the biases. Stay tuned for more book summaries. Till we meet again, goodbye.